and codependency. Click on your seatbelts because this is going to be a ride. Boundaries. This is a major topic and it's one that eluded me for years. I couldn't understand it. So how could I apply it? I had the book. I took the classes. I went to therapy for years. I just couldn't grasp it. I remember somebody telling me their personal experience of boundaries and it was like they were speaking another language to me. It was so foreign. Okay, you might think I'm kidding, but I'm being totally serious. When I had a near-death experience, someone else's life flashed before my eyes. Mm, mm, mm. I had it bad. So I had this dream, it was years ago, but I had this dream that I died and I was laying in a coffin in the ground and all the people that knew me were standing around my grave and they looked down at me, at my body, and they all said it. They said, oh look, we killed it. Does that give you a clue? Yeah, no boundaries. There are many titles that I hold and I don't mean a doctorate. What I mean is I'm an ACOA, an adult child of an addict. I'm not alone. So there are a lot of you that can relate to what I'm about to say, but I learned at an early age that I am not that important and that our family needed to wrap ourselves around the parent who was suffering from their addiction so that we could keep a semblance of peace and harmony in the home. <laughs> so when in reality, what we were doing was we were just a hot mess of codependence and we were learning how to enable selfish, addictive behaviors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I know that it sounds like I'm on a rampage and I'm not. I have forgiven my dad and I get it. I became an addict too. I know what it's like to have a monkey on your back and you just can't get him off. It's no joke. So getting back to boundaries, do you want to know how I was able to understand and finally apply and practice boundaries in my life? I'll tell you, but what I'm about to tell you truly helped me. It's this. <laughs> and you might think I'm crazy and maybe you're right, but this is going to blow your mind. Ready? Here we go. So here's the story of the toilet paper roll. When I started in my recovery, I didn't have any pictures of myself when I was little um, because I had just moved up to Alaska. So it was necessary for me to have something that resembled me as a child. So I took one of these and I drew myself as a four-year-old on this little toilet paper roll. And it gave me something to look at when I needed to talk to the little four-year-old girl. Because see, that's when a lot of my wounding happened. It started, as I can remember, when I was four, four and five. So how old were you when some things happened to you that weren't loving? and nurturing. How old would you say you were? Because if you're going to do this with me, you'll want one of these so that you can draw yourself at the age that you were. Whether it's 4, 8, 12, 16, 18, whatever age you were, this is going to help. Trust me. So as you have picked out an age for yourself, can you think right now, present day, can you think of somebody that's about that age now in your life, a neighbor's kid, one of your children, grandchildren, but can you think of a child that's about that age that you chose that's in your life? I was blessed. I, I could think of my son. I remember my son when he was four and five years old. It was just a beautiful age. 
and I remember how he would say his words funny and um, how he was just so innocent. And just his thought processes were, were that of a four and five year old child. And it's important to be able to do this because whatever age is on your toilet paper roll, that's the age you want to think of, the way they think, the way they see the world, the way they say their words. It's important. So now think of a time when someone blew over your boundaries. And what I mean by that is, I can just speak from example, of a time when somebody has kind of coerced you into doing something that you really don't want to do. I have an example. I live in Alaska. In a few days, they're going to have the winter solstice, which is the midnight sun, because the sun hardly sets here in the summertime. We'll have maybe a couple hours of evening. It's not even, it's kind of twilight. It's not even dark. <laughs> but they're having something called the midnight sun where they're gonna have a baseball game really late at night. And someone that we know very dear to us is having a party. And I was asked if I would go. And I've been encouraged to go, like strongly. The old Debbie would have gone because I wouldn't wanna hurt anybody's feelings. I wouldn't wanna let anybody down. The new Debbie with boundaries is thinking very differently. See, sleep is very important to me. And this event starts about an hour and a half after I go to sleep. So I have no interest in staying up all night and it taking me two to three days to recover from that. My work won't allow that. I need to be present at my job so I can be there for my participants. So, I sat in the adult chair of my life and protected little Debbie. See, if somebody came up to my four-year-old child and started saying, you're gonna go to this midnight sun event, you're gonna stay up all night and you have to go. Well, me as the adult would say, um, no, no, that child doesn't. So I am protecting my inner self saying, no, no, we don't need to go to that. We're gonna be just fine and we're gonna get some sleep. We'll have some rest while all of you guys are staying up late and having a good time. Thank you very much. It's easy for me to have a boundary now because I'm in the adult chair and it's my responsibility to take care of little Debbie. I can do that. I can remember a time when I didn't have boundaries and I would have responded very much like a four-year-old child would and say, oh, okay, well, I have to go. Okay, well, I guess I'll go then, right? I would respond like I'm still a child. Thank God I'm not. <laughs> it's like when a bee stings us when we're a child. And then as an adult, we see a bee coming at us. And what do we do? We scream like a little kid because it scares us to death. We remember the pain. <laughs> anyway, when I learned that it's my responsibility to sit in the adult chair and make decisions and protect my inner child, my inner self, then the boundaries begin to look doable and normal to me. Can I hear an amen? Amen! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. As a matter of fact, the more I practice this, the more I'm able to heal a lot of wounds in my life. So join me in protecting your beautiful self. Because remember, we're incredible humans. Beautiful too. Thanks for watching.